Memory serves in, to some extent the critical role of, of giving us our sense of self. There's a, a, a person named Clive Waring that there's a lot of YouTube videos on who literally is living in the present. He has no ability to retrieve past experiences, no ability to lay down new memories. Um, and he describes his life as waking up fresh every morning, every minute of every day. It's like he's just woken up and just woken up. Um, so if we, if we were living on that sort of island of the present, um, we would literally have no idea who we are and where we fit. I think generally most of us believe that um, the vast majority of our behavior is driven by our conscious choices, our conscious rational analysis of, of a situation and the right way to behave. Um, and I think some of our behavior is driven by that. The vast majority of our behavior is actually controlled by things like past learning experiences, being rewarded for behaving certain ways or punished for behaving certain ways. As you study memory, you don't trust memory. <laughs> so one of the things you learn very early on is memory, uh, conscious memory is best thought of like uh, police investing in crash investigation with a critical distinction. If you think of the police, they have the fragments of the accident and they take those fragments mix them with assumptions about how things work in the real world and come up with a scenario, a replay, if you will, of that accident. Uh, we do the same thing, but we have a real problem. We cannot tell the difference between the data that we have actually pulled back and the assumptions we've made. They all blend together. So they become this memory, but in fact it's a different memory every time, depending on the assumptions, and we can't tell the difference. So our memories are constantly, our memories of a given event, X, are constantly evolving. And it's harder to find things memory is not affecting than things that it is. It's pretty much everything we do is, is a reflection of our previous experience.